Hello and welcome to our video summary on The Reluctant Fundamentalist, which is a novel by Moshun Hamid. This video is really useful if you are studying this novel as part of your coursework or exams because we examine not only important contextual factors relating to this novel, but also we summarise the novel in a nutshell, look at its key themes, characters and important symbols that you must be aware of if you wish to analyse this successfully. So beginning with the context, it's important to be aware of the author himself, Mushin Hamid. So he spent some of his early life in the US and some in Pakistan, and this journey is very much reflected in the key protagonist, Changez. He ended up settling in London for almost a decade, and in his work, he really enjoys using experimental approaches to both drama and story. The other important event to be really aware of contextually is the September 9-11 attacks. These Attacks are essentially when 19 terrorists associated with Al-Qaeda hijacked four airplanes. Two planes were flown into the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center in New York City and a third plane flew into the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. The fourth crashed into a field and over 3,000 people were killed as a result of these attacks. Now, when it comes to the summary, we begin by learning about a young man named Changez who asks a stranger if they're lost and need some help. The stranger is in Pakistan and Changez is talking to him. He says the stranger looks American and he offers to take him to a cafe. There, the man tells the stranger about when he attended Princeton and lived in the US. Changez, who's recalling the story, says that he had to work many jobs and he fell for the idea of the American dream. After college, we learn that Changez uh, gets an interview with the great company called Underwood Samson and he's offered a job. He then goes on holiday in Greece before starting with his future colleagues and he meets another Princeton graduate called Erica. Back in New York, once they return, they spend much time together and he notices, however, that she starts growing distant and she admits that her boyfriend died the year before and this really haunts her. Then, in September 11, 2001, Changez, who's now working as part of Underwood Samson and he's part of this elite grouping of people, he is working in the middle of the Philippines and he sees news of the World Trade Center attacks. However, contrary to what we expect, we find that he feels some pleasure at this site. Afterwards, when he does return back to the US with his colleagues, in contrast to his colleagues, we find that he is discriminated for his looks and the airport security treats him much more differently than his other American colleagues. Chinguez gets together with Erica, but he finds that they are even further apart than ever before. Chinguez then returns home to Pakistan as the racism he's facing in the US grows as a result of the 9-11 attacks and he becomes increasingly conflict conflicted between feeling a lot of hatred for the US and its meddling in India and Pakistan but he also feels very much American and in many ways he's achieved the American dream. He's worked incredibly hard. He now has a very prestigious job and is quite successful from a financial standpoint. So this really conflicts him. He realises, however, that by working for a US company, he's like a warrior that's working against Pakistan. He returns to Pakistan permanently and begins work as a lecturer but he also joins demonstrations against America and we find that he's becoming incredibly hardline in his views which is a direct contrast to Chinguez in the earlier part of the novel who was very desperate to become incredibly westernized and incredibly American. Chinguez ends his story with this stranger and realizes that the stranger is not really paying attention to him and actually the stranger looks very worried. Chingels tells the stranger that he should not suspect that all foreigners are dangerous, just as all Americans in Pakistan are not spies. Now, when it comes to the key characters, the first obviously is Chingels. So he's a hardworking Pakistani who moves to the US to attend college on a scholarship in Princeton, and then he works in New York, and he's incredibly happy with the new life that he sets for himself. However, he becomes disillusioned with America after 9-11 and the consequent racism that he faces and the rise of patriotism amongst Americans that he notices and he begins to feel really foreign. So whilst he felt initially quite embraced by America, he now finds that his American dream is crumbling. And by the end, we don't quite know whether he's a terrorist simply against America or he still misses his old life. The stranger 
who essentially sets off the entire story as Chang Yez recounts his story to him, uh, is someone who remains very much a mystery. We don't really quite know him and he never quite says much during the novel. We do suspect that he could either be a tourist or a spy and many people who analyse this novel lean towards him being a CIA spy. All we really know, however, is that he's American and he doesn't really seem to trust Cheng Yez. When it comes to themes in this novel, the first is patriotism. So Cheng Yez picks up on many of the patriotic habits and aspects of America. At Princeton University, students are taught to love America and to go on to work in great American companies. After 9-11, he feels this patriotism even more, but more so in the form of racism. So even New York, which is very cosmopolitan, very mixed and very metropolitan, and thus incredibly diverse, becomes extremely pro-American and very anti anything that isn't American. Coming of age is an important theme. So early on in the story, Cheng Yez lets his fate and others rule his growth. He attends Princeton and works in America for a good company. And that is because that is what others are telling him is right. But later on, he realises that he allowed others to control where his life went and he wants to take control of this again. And after 9-11, he feels very much rejected, both by America and also his lover, Erica. And he feels very foreign in this place that he allowed to become his home. Thus, anger manifests into a dislike for the country, which he then ultimately leaves. Racism is another important theme. So in this story, racism is the cause of what it fears. By people being racist towards Cheng Yez, he grows bitter and begins to be the type of fundamentalist that they very much fear. There are many forms of racism in this story, from outright and obvious racism when Cheng Yez is stopped at airports or called an Arab, to softer, more implicit types of racism. For example, when his friends call him exotic. All these forms of racism become very alienating to Cheng Yez. American imperialism is another important theme. So the story portrays America as a very strong foreign power. Aside from a str- having a strong military, America recruits bright young students into its universities and gets them into American companies. Foreigners are encouraged to adapt quickly to American way of life and to be absorbed by Americans. And Cheng Yez is stuck between the love he had for America when he lived there and his hate for its imperialism and meddling in his home country, Pakistan. In terms of analysis, the first and important symbol is Underwood Samson, the company that Chang Yez works for. This company is a symbol for the US as a whole. It is powerful, it promises great opportunity, but it also has some racism in it. And those who are absorbed into Underwood Samson have to shed significant parts of their identity to fit in. The people that work for it travel around the world to help clients, but this is like how America meddles in foreign issues and Chang Yez wonders if they're doing more harm than good. Tea is another important symbol. So a stranger and Cheng Yez sit in a tea shop. And at first, a stranger doesn't trust Cheng Yez not to poison his tea. But by the end of the story, he's gladly drinking it. The tea symbolises the process of the stranger coming to trust Cheng Yez. We don't know how exactly the story ends, though. It does end quite abruptly. And the tea may actually be poisoned. Or the two may have been brought closer as a result of Cheng Yez's story. So that's all. If you found this video useful, do subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Also, do visit www.firstratetutors.com for revision sheets and model essays on this novel. And this will be particularly useful if you are seeking extra information to support either your coursework writing or your exam revision. Thank you so much for listening.